Hi, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out the UK and I tend to talk about different subjects that I think um, are of interest or affect the black community mainly. Um, so today I'm referring to the headlines in the Telegraph on Friday the 29th and the headlines said um, the police are to be given hugely effective stop and search powers which to me it implies that the stop and search um, works it's actually effective but according to the Home Office their statistics which comes from 43 um, police forces it says that only 0.32 percent which is equivalent of one in 300 of the section 60 searches resulted in an individual being arrested for the possession of an offensive weapon so if I mean that's one percent so if that is the case why is Savvy Javid going to such an extent to have these Section 60 powers reintroduced and for a year. See, when they did it last year for the carnival, you could understand it. I mean, it's a massive place and it was in place for, I think, 48 hours. They did the Section 60. They also did it at Stratford Station. And I think that was for a couple of hours, a couple of days, I should have said. Did I say a couple of hours? That was for like 48 hours for Carnival. And I think it was 48 hours or a, about a week for Stratford. And they also did it at Kingsbury, which I think was for another week. But what he's saying now is that he wants to um, have this SAS law, the Section 60, for a whole year. He's going to review it in six months. Why would you do that if it's not an effective way of finding out whether or not people have knives and guns and they're talking about oh they need to get to the root cause the root cause is that how many um 13,000 kids have been expelled from school what the hell are those kids supposed to be doing that's what they, they need to be looking into. They need to be looking in broken families. They need to look at children who are victims or who witness domestic abuse. They need to look at children whose, relate, whose parents have left them or they're fostered or something's happened. or you know, That's what they need to be looking at. Children who are bullied. Not, not pay over £100 million. Pounds. I don't, they got it from some charity. The charity is called the Impetus Charitable Foundation. They, they're to manage the £200 million Youth Endowment Fund designed to tackle youth violence. £200 million. So they're now put in um, 30... This, all this information I've got. I'm trying to get it right, though. Um, how many police are they introducing? Oh, uh, I hate it when I do this. 3,000. I didn't want to say 30 when it was 3,000. So they're putting 3,000 more officers on the streets. Now, it's, it's going to be focused on these areas. Um, London, West Midlands, Merseyside, South Yorkshire, West Yorkshire, South Wales and Greater Manchester for up to a year. So that we've got police all over the place under the guise of this stop and search, which I don't believe is for knife crime. I don't believe it. I do not believe it because there's other ways. And the thing is, I bet you they're not um, the stop and search. I bet you they're, they're, they're not stopping young boys who are the ones who actually have the knives. I bet they're honing in on adults and all sorts for whatever reason. It's almost like they're trying to provoke a situation. And I think that's what they're trying to do. They don't like the fact that black people are lo being low key. They're very quiet. They're not reacting to all the injustices. So I think they're trying to find a way to let black people react. Maybe I'm going under this conspiracy theory. I don't know. But I don't understand why they're being so provocative. And there's nothing worse then knowing that the police can stop and search you and they don't even need a reason. I mean, Montel Neuville, he leads on the um, training for the police in Bedfordshire and he's had such a brilliant programme 
um, where they, they've been really working with the police, fantastic relationship with the police. And they input, they introduced, I don't know if they introduced it, but they have this go wisely protocol. It's, the G stands for um, grounds, the go. O stands for object, the object that they're looking for. The W stands for the warrant. The I stands for the identity of the police officer. The S stands for the station that they're assigned to. The E stands for the evidence they're supposed to write it out and let you have a notice of why they've stopped you. The L stands for the legislation um, under what they're stopping you. So if it's an offensive weapon, they'll say under the crime and policing bill or the offensive weapon bill or the knife and crime bill, whatever that legislation is. And the why is the you, why you are being detained. Now, what they're saying now is is after all that hard work they have to scrap all of that and they can just stop you and if they want to depending on which police officer it is they can just you know abuse their power you know the, the police in Bedfordshire they've got such a good reputation the majority of them and we we watch videos and yes there are some people who are a bit you know iffy there's good and bad in everyone but you know there are videos that they watch of them while they're working and they're they're actually trained and if they are not um stopping and searching um effectively they you know they've got their police officers they've got the seniors there who look at these videos and tell them, you know, you should have done this or maybe you should have done that or how could you have done it a little better. And so you get a feeling that the police are working with the community. Now, Savage Javid throws all of that hard work out of the window and he's gone right back to um, the days when they just used to, you know, pounce on everybody and there was no law. And he's gone taking us right back to that to see what Stephen Lawrence days. I mean, it really is, really is uh, unfortunate. And, you know, I, I understand that, you know, it's all it's still almost like everything, they're try, tying everything in together. Everything's being brought in, you know. And I understand that they're trying to um, reduce the, um, what do you call it? Reduce net migration, I understand that. But it's like they're that the hostile um environment the knife and crime bill the curb bill now this it's they, they're talking about it's not to target blacks but why would they say that i mean why would you even bring that into the equation because that is what happens because they use knife crime they don't say use violence they say knife crime because that's the buzzword for black on black crime since when has these white politicians ever been concerned about a black boy killing another black boy okay occasionally you have one little white a white boy that does it but the majority of it is black on black and you can't tell me that they're interested in that. They've never been interested before. So why the sudden interest? I can only assume if there's an underlying motive. There's definitely an underlying motive for this sus law. And I think it's to do with in cahoots with Operation Nexus. I think it's all to do with the same thing. I also think, this is my conspiracy theory, that 25 million when remember when david cameron went to jamaica in 2015 and they allegedly gave the jamaican government 25 million even though the jamaican government are saying it didn't happen um i have a funny feeling that that 25 million was was actually accepted and that is what's paying for all of these different sources which the deportees are not benefiting from but that I believe it was set up out of that. Now, this is just my opinion. And I believe that when they're deporting all these Jamaicans, I'm just talking about Jamaicans now because I don't know the stats for everybody else. But there's a lot of Jamaican, plain loads of Jamaicans being um, deported. And I believe it's a part of because when they when um, David Cameron went to Jamaica and, and put that offer over to them for the 25 million. We only had 700 um, Jamaicans in our jails 
and we had more Irish and Polish in the jail. So why would they give David, why would David Cameron want to give Jamaica 25 million for 700 Jamaican nationals? It doesn't make any sense. So obviously there, there's something else going on. That's why I'm saying there's some underlying, um, some underlying thing going on. And it's all to do with this getting rid of Commonwealth people from the Commonwealth countries. But what they don't tell you is that over 100,000 Polish people or from the EU came to came over here the same time as the Windrush, you know, they weren't they weren't stigmatized because they can blend in because they're white. But they were given they were given um, accommodation, they were given um, jobs. And after a few years, they could naturalize and no questions asked that those that immigration um, amount. What doesn't factor into the figures It's only when it comes to people of color, when they start talking about immigration. But you know what? Like I always say, I wouldn't mind, but just come clean. Just say what you're saying and do what you're doing to let us in on it. Don't do all this thing around the back door. If you if if you have got a plan and you want to get rid of black people, whatever it is you want to do, just do it. You're going to do it anyway, but you can let us in on it so we can start, kind of work out what we need to do instead of trying to create riots and um, animosity and build resentment against people that are actually our friends. I mean, why would you do that? We, I mean, we all work together and we're all building together. We all kind of have this common kind of ground. And yet all the time you're trying to feed something negative into the system to create, to create enmity between white and black, rich and poor, just to meet, just to, for your own agenda. Anyway, I've gone on long enough. I didn't even plan to go on this long, but all I'm saying is that it's really, really, frustrating and annoying and it's unnecessary just be honest be like the americans i know we say the americans are loud and this and that at least you know where you stand with them with this lot over here you don't know where you stand everybody's bumped in the same everybody's jumped jumped in one big pot and that's it and it's just like you know everybody's waiting for the pot to bubble and you know it's so unnecessary if you just come clean and do what you're doing Stop. You don't have to be nice. You know, the British have the stiff upper lip and they like to be polite and they like to have this reputation of being nice. It's not necessary because under all that niceness is something else. And that's why there's so much frustration, because people are fed up of being polite. The Brits are fed up of being polite. So, you know, whether you're a white Brit or a black Brit, it's hard work being polite. So if there's animosity, if there's any resentment, just come out with it. The government should just come out with it instead of playing games. It's so annoying. Anyway, I've said enough. Bye.